Thanks for staying with us. This is Business Incorporated on Channels Television. I am BC Adebayo. On today's program, Nigeria's headline inflation trims to 16.01%, and Egypt weighs plans to raise 1.5 billion euros from the country's first sale of euro denominated bonds. Plus, South African private equity firm Capital Works moves to provide financial and operational support for hedge funds. Nigeria's Consumer Price Index, which measures inflation, trims to 16.01% by 0.04% in the month of August. The National Bureau of Statistics today released the monthly inflation report showing headline consumer price index down seven consecutive months in January, since January 2017. The data shows that food inflation declined to 20.25% from 20.28% in July while core inflation increased slightly by one-tenth of a percent to 12.3 percent last month. In the meantime, urban inflation advanced to 16.13 percent in August from 16.04 percent in July, while in rural parts of Nigeria it dropped to 15.91 percent in the period from 16.08 percent in July. Now let's hear the stock markets in Africa where Nigeria's all share index appears to be giving up previous gains at intraday with a 0.19% decline. The South African burst is also down at intraday. The Egyptian index rose 1.25% on Thursday while the Kenyan burst returned to winning ways on Thursday with a 0.19% rise. And in the Middle East, telecommunication shares weighed on the Saudi Arabian stock market on Thursday after authorities moved to remove the ban on voice and video calls over the Internet while Qatar continued to fall as foreign buyers intensified their selling. The Riyadh index fell 0.09% as the top three telecommunications providers dropped. In Abu Dhabi, Danagas climbed 2.5% and the index rose 0.6%. The Dubai index edged up 0.07% to 3,657 points. Qatar's index continued to slide from Wednesday's 52-month closing low, dropping a further 0.22%. Thursday's decline marked the index's ninth straight, straight losing session. The European stocks posted small losses on Friday but headed for solid weekly gains as investors digest the latest provocation from North Korea and a terror explosion in London. Well, let's bring in DWTV Channels TV financial correspondent Orich Beth for more on today's markets. It's good to have you, Orich. How much of a terror explosion today on London Underground train is feeding into the trading day from currencies to equities? Yeah, it did uh, not really have much of an impression on the markets. Uh, in fact, the British pound uh, trading up a little, uh, the euro uh, slightly down um, on, on the dollar, and uh, equities basically treading water, not really showing any great uh, reaction. Uh, to this uh, event uh, in London, terrible incident. Um, you can see behind me the DAX is making little twitches there, but um, that, traders tell me, is a result of uh, today's triple witching, uh, that is, uh, the uh, maturity of uh, many different kinds of options and futures on the futures exchange here uh, in Europe, and uh, not, a, not a result of, these, uh, uh, of this event in London. Uh, I talked to a trader on this, and he said, uh, you know, it's funny, we've, we've been kind of accustomed uh, to these attacks and uh, the markets really don't view it as an event to really act on, but he sees that at the same time, having said that, uh, as something alarming. One should be alarmed when something like that happens, but the market is not. Well, how seriously elevated is the market's volatility index right now, even as North Korea remains unbowed by fresh sanctions firing new missile over Japan. Yeah, much different reaction uh, than the last time uh, North Korea sent a missile flying over Japan. Um, also here, not much of an, uh, not leaving much of a mark in the volatility index, uh, nor in the other parts of the market. And uh, talking to people here, they just believe that uh, at the moment, North Korea, yes, there's saber rattling and saber rattling on both sides, not good. But uh, people don't believe that it's a situation at the moment, judging by all the verbal comments of the major politicians, U.S. President Donald Trump included, 
included that it's more than saber rattling. People don't see a military escalation. And so that also is seen at the moment, at least this Friday, as a relatively benign event for the markets. Should we expect any blue ocean for the markets next week after all the rattling in the week ending today? Yeah, I think uh, the two major events will be there, and uh, both could uh, spell some relief uh, for the market. Uh, the first will be the Fed. Uh, the U.S. Central Bank meets on Tuesday and on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, when the meeting is concluded, uh, in the evening, European time and uh, African time, uh, Janet Yellen, the Fed chair, uh, will uh, speak to the press about the results of the meeting. And uh, from the market's point of view and from their hopes, hopefully give some guidance on what the Fed uh, is intending to do till the end of the year and beyond that. And I think many people here are urgently hoping uh, for clear guidance, for a clear signal uh, of how the Fed pr intends to proceed and uh, will there be an interest rate, rate hike before the end of the year. Uh, normally interest rate hikes uh, are not good for equities uh, at least. In this case, I think the clarity, which is so largely desired by large groups of investors here, uh, might provide some positive relief for people here. The other event, not really in the next week, but at the end of next week, uh, is Sunday's uh, election here in Germany. It'll be on September 24th, so in 10 days, if you will. Uh, but that's also a major, major uh, point of focus for the markets. Nobody really expects Angela Merkel, the chancellor, to lose this election. They expect her to get a mandate, a clear mandate, for a fourth term in office. But it's important that a, that news does indeed come. And then, of course, the, uh, uh, the vote might also yield new coalition partners. And depending on which coalition in the end reigns in Germany, there's never one party alone, um, then uh, it's, uh, it, it has a big effect on the economy, on companies, and on the market. We'll see how all that play out in the coming week. Well, it's a great speaking with you, Arit, and do have a very wonderful weekend.